So, starting with number eight, we've got a table here that's comparing uh, the number of hours and the amount charged for an air conditioning repair company, all right? So this table shows us how much the repair company charges for a different number of hours of work. So we're comparing uh, hours and money, right? Those are our two units that we're comparing. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fill out this graph. And luckily we have six points here that are all nice and neat that we can plot on this graph. So the first thing I wanna point out is that the X axis here, or the T axis technically, is going by one half each notch, right? One half, one. One and a half, two. But our Y axis, or our A axis in this case, is going by 50. Right here is 50, 100, 150, 200, and so on. So we've got different scales on the X axis and the Y axis. That's just something we want to point out. So we take our first point, 0, comma, 50. We're going to start at the origin. 0 says we're going to go to the right, 0 spaces. And 50 says we're going to go up 50 spaces, which is just one notch upward. Next point is 1, 100. We're going to go to the right until we hit 1, and then we're going to go up until we hit 100. Right? Then we go 2, 150, 3, 200, 4, 250, and 5, 300. So we can see as we're drawing those points that we start to see a line forming, right? You should have you should have rulers in your box if you need a ruler. So our graph is going to look like that. So let's go ahead and find our slope. We know what our y-intercept is, right? What's our y-intercept here for this? 50, right? B is equal to 50. So we're going to keep that in mind. Our B value is wherever we see an X value of 0. Or we can look over at the graph and see, hey, this line crosses the Y axis right there at 50. So to find our slope, we've got to find the change in Y from 250 to 300. That's plus 50. And from 4 to 5 is plus 1. Yes, Azalea? Yeah, what's our equation here, Azalea, going to be? Exactly. Y equals 50X plus 50. So I saw a lot of people get this, which is great. Just keep in mind that our B being 50 and our M being 50, those are two separate things. Just something to keep in mind. You may find a slope in the Y-intercept as the same number. That's totally fine. Don't get confused or tripped up on that. So what does this, uh, what does this 50 right here mean? If we had to describe what that 50 means in the context of this problem, what could you say about that? Theo, you want to take a stab at it? No. OK, Jordan. <laughs> Very close. Flip it around. So for every one hour they worked, they earned $50, right? That's what our unit rate says in the context of this problem. So why, after zero hours worked, have they charged 50 bucks? Any ideas? Was it you guys I talked about a down payment with yesterday or no? Uh, no. no? No, okay. Oops. <laughs> so, have you guys ever heard of the phrase down payment? Yeah. Can anyone explain to me what a down payment means? Ella, what's a down payment? Like, um, just like, 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 going down or whatever, like, like, multiplying or whatever. 
Good guess. Yeah, it definitely has to do with that. Oh, Meepo, you want to take a guess? Absolutely, yeah. So a down payment, If let's say you want to buy a car, right? You see a $10,000 car, but you don't have $10,000. You can put a down payment of $1,000 towards the car and then make payments on the remaining 9000 okay? So you put a down payment, which is like an initial, um, uh, just an initial cost that you put down, whatever you have, and then you pay monthly on top of that. So this $50 here after zero hours is kind of like a down payment because this company, it says, all right, we're going to do $50 an hour, but we charge a $50 flat rate first. Okay. And that's really common in companies like this. Um, so if they get there and it takes 30 minutes to assess what's going on, they don't get paid half of what they're supposed to. They still get that $50. So it's just a, a way to interpret that information. Didn't ask, but it's good to talk about. Yes, sure. Number nine. Uh, number nine is a fun one. A friend gave Miss Morris a gift card for a car wash, and this table shows the value of what's left on the card. What's that? Yeah, uh, I'm doing something right now. We'll do that at the end. Just remind me. So, uh, in number nine, we've got a car wash gift card to Miss Morris. How much money is on the card when Miss Morris first gets the car? Thirty dollars, right? After zero car washes, there's still thirty bucks left on the card. Is there a question back there? Okay. Again, let's focus up, please. So. Thirty dollars left on the card after zero car washes, right? So the first thing we got to do is write an equation that shows the number of dollars left on the card. Luckily for us, writing an equation here is the easiest part because we already know how to do that. The tricky part is then going to be explaining what those numbers mean. Do we see a B value on this table? Yeah, you do. I do. I see an X of zero, right? So our B value must be 30. And when we're talking about word problems, think back to our warm up. What does the B value represent? The initial value. Thank you, Theo, which is our starting point, right? So at the starting point of getting this card, there's $30 on it. And that makes sense, right? So we know that here our B is equal to 30. Um, and I shouldn't have written that there. Dang it. Whatever. So uh, let's do our change in Y now over our change in X. From 18 to 12, that's what? Minus 6. And from 8 to 12, that's plus 4. But what would 30 to 18 be? Minus 12. And what about 0 to 8? Plus 8. Hmm. So this uh, had a lot of people asking questions yesterday, so let's make sure we're listening here. You may look at this and immediately go, oh, this is nonlinear. We don't have a constant change. Boom, don't have to do any of the other work. But before we just exclude this problem and pass it along, let's set up our slope fractions, right? The change in Y over the change in X here would be negative 12 over 8. And the change in y over the change in x here would be negative 6 over 4. Anything interesting we notice about these two fractions? What do you notice, Theo? Hannah, what do you notice? They're equivalent. Is that the word you were thinking of, Theo? Yeah, yeah there we go. Thank you both. I appreciate it. These fractions are equivalent or equal to each other. If we wanted to simplify this, 4 times 3 over 4 times 2, and 3 times 2 over 3, or 2 times 2, we can cancel out the 2's, cancel out the 4's, and both those fractions reduce to negative 3 over 2. So this is still a linear function 
with a slope of negative 3 over 2. So our equation y equals negative 3 over 2x plus 30. So when we're writing the equation, we don't really need to have too firm of a grasp on what's going on in the problem. We just do what we're used to doing. Looking at the table, finding the y-intercept, doing all that. So now we have to explain the meaning of the negative slope in this situation. That question uh, confuse anybody? Anybody not know where to start for that one? It's okay if you did. Um, can someone help me explain the meaning of this negative slope here? Why is our slope negative? Hannah, go for it. Because Miss Morris is using the card, right? So she's spending a certain amount of money every time she goes to the car wash. How much does she spend each time? Negative three over two dollars, right? What's three over two in dollars format? A dollar fifty, right? Yeah. So let's explain the meaning of the negative slope. Uh, Miss Morris spends a dollar fifty for each car wash. That's good enough for me, and that's good enough in general. That tells us we know that she's spending money, right? If we were saving money, it would be a positive slope, like in the warm up. But when you're spending money, it's going to be a negative slope. So if you can identify that she's spending money, that's what I'm looking for. And then see what is the maximum value of x that makes sense in this context. Now, that question, I'm going to admit, is worded really badly. Basically, what it says is how many total car washes can she get? for 30 bucks. Okay. Maximum value of X. What does X represent here? Number of car washes. So if we replace X with that, this question says, what is the maximum value of number of car washes that makes sense? Right? So it's basically saying, how many car washes can she get for a $30 gift card? So what we're going to do here is a little bit confusing. You could do it manually. You could count a buck fifty, three dollars, and then six dollars, nine dollars, and so on. But that takes a lot of work, and it's really easy to mess up. So let's use our equation. Um, let's use our equation. We've got negative three over two x plus thirty. We don't know what x is, right? We're looking for the maximum value of x. So x is going to be our unknown variable. And y, we're going to set equal to 0. All right? We're going to set y equal to 0 because that's what we want the ending balance of our gift card to be. And figuring that out is a little bit tricky. It even took me a minute, so don't worry if you didn't figure that out. Now we just got to figure out how to get x all by itself. We'll subtract 30 from both sides. Negative 3 over 2x equals negative 30. And let me get a piece of scratch paper. All right, so I'm going to work out this equation here. Again, Brandon, turn around. Let's make sure we're paying attention, guys. We subtract 30 from both sides. Those cancel out. Negative 30 equals negative 3 over 2x. We're going to multiply both sides by negative 2 over 3 so that we can cancel out this fraction and get x all by itself, right? The threes cancel, the twos cancel, and the minuses cancel. So we're left with x on the right 
Negative times negative is a positive. 30 times 2 is 60 over 3. This makes no sense? Where did I lose you if this makes no sense? On number 9? Oh, okay. So writing the equation in general, you're saying? No, it's okay. I, I would like to know if it's confusing. So, so I think the writing the equation part, I think, should be somewhat simple because the, it's exactly the same process we've been doing. What might be a little harder is finding, like, a value. Am I right or wrong? What do you think? Yeah? Is that more like it? Okay. So we're going to have some practice with that today, luckily. This one is way more confusing than it should be. And now you guys know why I don't really use the textbook. So basically this works out to 60 divided by 3, x equals 20. So they can go to 20 car washes at a buck 50 uh, before their gift card is gone. 20 car washes. That's okay if you didn't get that. Let's take a look down at number 10. So from negative 1 to 0, that's plus 1, plus 1. But here we got plus 2. On the top, we got plus 1, plus 1, and plus 2 again. So before we dismiss this problem as being nonlinear, Again, let's set up our slopes and see if they're equivalent. 1 over 1 and 2 over 2. Are those equivalent fractions to each other? Yeah, yeah what are they both equal? 1. What's our y-intercept here from the table? Positive 1. We see it right there, 0, comma 1. So we can write the equation y equals x plus 1. 1x one plus 1 also works. But this is the cleaner way to do it. Over here in number 11, we got minus 10 plus 2 minus 12. Whoa, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of different numbers there. On the top, we've got plus 5 minus 1 and plus 6. Whole lot of different stuff going on. This table's all jumbled up and out of order. But again, if we set up our slopes, negative 10 over 5, 2 over negative 1, negative 12 over 6, we see that these are all equivalent to what? Very close. Negative 2. Right? Our y-intercept is at 6. We can see that from the table. y equals negative 2x plus 6. Take a look at 12. Almost done here. So, number 12, we're talking about finances. Just like our warm up today, we're going to start a savings account. Desiree starts it with 125 in it. Every month, she's depositing $53.50, right? So, on our table for months, we're going to just write out. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Keep it nice and simple, Jocelyn. Sure, go ahead. We're going to keep it nice and simple. Um, and we definitely want a 0 on our table, right? Because that's going to tell us what our y-intercept is. What's up, Ms. Mogger? Right here. Leslie, really? Yeah, Andy's right there. Sorry. No, you're good. So we definitely want a zero. Good morning, Mr. Dresser. 
So we definitely want a zero in our table. Sorry. No, you're good. No worries. What are the odds? Since he just come in at once. Thank you, Mr. Desert. I don't know what he's doing, but. All right. Back to Earth we go. So we're starting the account with 125, right? So after zero months, how much is in the savings account? 125, right? That is our initial value or our starting point. Okay? Now, after one month, are we just going to double this and go, what, 250? No. No? How much are we adding per month? That's right. So from this, we can see that we're depositing 53.50 per month, and we're starting at 125. One way I like to remember this is you always begin with B. So your B value represents where you begin. Okay, begin at B. With B, you begin. So we're beginning with 125. That's our B. We're adding 53.50 each time. That's going to give us, what, 178.50? Uh, 130, what, 132? 30, yeah. 285.50. And then I'm too lazy to do the last one. What's the last box? Azalea? 339 even? Yeah. Okay, good, great job. So we're not adding 125 each time. I think I saw that a couple times yesterday. We're adding this 5350 each time. So let's write our equation. We know what B is, we know what M is, that's easy. 5350X plus 125. And then C, we're going to use this equation to find out how much money Desiree is going to have after 11 months. So we're going to take 11 and we're going to plug it in for either the X or the Y. How do we know which one we're going to plug it into? Azalea says X. Why do you say X? Ah, so the units on the number we're given is months, right? We take a look back up at our table and months is represented by x. So we're going to take 11 and plug it in for x right there. y equals 53.50 times 11 plus 125. Uh, what do we get here? Is it 58850? I think it is. I can. Just kidding. It's fun. I just I'm too lazy to do this in my head right now. 58850, even though I was right, plus 125, and that's going to give us a final answer of what? 613.50. Yep. Oh. 713.50. 713.50. I got it right on the calculator. I was given a wrong answer. But it's okay. It's always fun to be wrong. I'm wrong all the time about a lot of stuff. Me too. So this is a 713.50. I'm going to rewrite it. And that's our final dollar amount after 11 months. Questions on that one? That one was a little bit tricky. Hopefully we're still locked in. And then down here, uh, I believe this one's nonlinear, right? We got yeah. minus 2 plus 1 
plus 1.5 plus 1 that right there tells us this is not going to work because even if we set up our slope fractions we've got negative 2 and 1.5 those are not the same slope this is non linear nope we can't write an equation because there is no constant rate of change so if we graphed all these numbers it would look something like this okay that is definitely not linear it's going all kinds of different directions it won't actually look like that but it'll be all bent up and out of shape all right questions on this what's that it looks like a bat it does look like a bat there we go it's a little bat all right go ahead and uh, give this worksheet to whoever's in seat number one of your group for me get your chromebooks out signed on to yeah Yes, yeah, yeah, I got you right now.